are people still doing that kind of thing today? We don't want to name them and yeah, give them I any attention, them here, but, but are yeah, there other sites? The, and a lot of them live on the dark web. And for audience members who aren't aware what the dark web is, the dark web is a, a very small sliver of the actual internet. Let's say about 5%, 5 to 7%. Um, but it is the wild, wild west. You know, you need a special browser just to get to the dark web. But you can get anything on the dark web. Look at companies like Silk Road that operated on the dark web. You could order drugs, have it delivered to your house via the dark web. You could hire a hitman. You can go on the dark web even now today in this political environment. And if you're a Republican and you're having an online dispute with a Democrat on social media, there you go on the dark web and you can hire someone to go harass and stalk the person you're having a fight with for a couple grand. They will stalk them online. They will stalk their children online. And in some instances, they will physically stalk them. And if these bad actors can get on the dark web, then so can the FBI and yeah. the county sheriff and other that's people. Right. Do they do that? Do they get on there and track this activity? They do. And that's how they ended up getting Silk Road. You know, the problem is, and God bless law enforcement, you know, I'm a huge supporter of them. Um, you're really limited what you can do. So if someone comes to you and says, my naked images ended up on the dark web, the law enforcement's really limited what they can do. If you even you know, serve a subpoena, you've somehow found a server somewhere where you're able to issue a subpoena, even if you got the results of the subpoena, the chances are pretty good. The IP address information, the location you get is not where that person actually is. They've obfuscated their IP address and they're in another country altogether. So it's a never ending rabbit hole. And that's where Bullyville comes into play. Um, I bypass all of that. You know, once again, I, I believe in what law enforcement does. I wish them all the best, but I can just get past all of that and target that individual sure. server or site on the dark web. You can get to it and then you can interact with the owners of that domain or the domain itself or whatever. Yeah. Or, or not interact with them at all and just interact with the server itself. Yeah. Yeah. Hypothetically. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we deal with all the time is these companies that put up fake ads selling products. They make the representation that Oprah and I have a product or Robin and I have a product or me and any number of people, they pair up, have these products. It's a bait and switch. They say you get this for free, but you have to give us your credit card number, of course. Yeah. We get so many letters from viewers, particularly those on fixed income that say, well, I'm going to try this. So they do it. And then all of a sudden they're getting billed $78 a month and they're on fixed income yeah. or $178 a month and they can't get it to stop. Right. We try to find the companies. We send cease and desist letters. They close down, move across the street, open back up. Yeah. It's hard as hell to find them. It's hard as hell to track them down. Yeah. And the key is to find the owners. You got to right. find, and those are who you go after. You go after the owners and make sure, you know, at least from our perspective, we want to make sure they know who we are and what we're about to do and give them, you know, the same thing with Hunter Moore. We're going to give you an opportunity to do the right thing. If you don't, you know. You're going to pay the digital consequences. And it's the equivalent of a digital enema that we gave to Hunter and that we give to others that rightly deserve it. Yeah. Sometimes we found that they're as close as San Diego and other times Thailand. Yeah. And that's the thing. So, and then even if you go to the police, what are they going to do? How are they going to stop someone in yeah, Thailand? They say, well, that's a civil matter. Yeah. It's a civil matter. And you go to the courts and when the courts, if you even get it, like you said earlier, cease and desist. You're going to send it to Thailand that's going to go in the trash can. Yeah, I bet I've sent a hundred cease and desist letters. Wow. Think about all the time and energy. Oh. And if you had attorneys that were doing it, how much money was involved in that? Yeah. And and you're still at you know square one. Yeah. And people are still getting sucked in by these people. Yeah. And I hate that. Yeah. And now, how many of the people contact you? Do you guys have a lot of customers who then contact you saying, hey? We do. We help them every way that we can, yeah, and we tough. tell them what they need to do to stop it, to call their bank, to do this, because the banks will stop it. Yeah. If they call their credit card company, they will cancel Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. But most people don't know that. Right. You have some 75-year-old woman out there, and they keep hitting her credit card every month. I say, well, I can't get them to cancel it. Well, you can call 
Exactly. Visa or Amex yeah. and tell them it's fraud, they'll yeah, stop it. Exactly. And they might even give you the money back. Sometimes. You know, it depends on what kind of card and all that you have. Yeah. So what's the biggest threat out there right now? We talked about some of these frauds today, but what's the biggest threat out there that people need to be concerned about on the internet? You know, is there a list? Yeah, I think probably the biggest concern is, is social engineering. So back in the day, it was brute force attacks. It was man against machine, you know, breaking into the networks, getting on the servers with no human interaction at all. It's a lot tougher to hack Microsoft these days to get to someone's email account. However, if I could email you directly via social engineering, that is the human to human element. And that's a lot easier. So I always tell people, you know, be real cautious. Just assume that everyone is out to get you on the internet. And that you, if you go in with that attitude that this is probably something's wrong with this email, for example, chances are you're right. Your gut instinct is right. Always go with your gut when it comes to cybersecurity. And if people get these emails from the IRS or from Amazon or whatever, and it says IRS, it says Amazon, it says Target or eBay or whatever, and they're not asking for money, they're not asking them to do anything, there's just a link there that they click on. Yeah. How do we get them to know not to do that? And if they're, for example, a regular Amazon customer, so they have a lot of traffic back and forth with Amazon. It's real easy to mix one in there that's phony. Yeah, it's tough. I always tell people just take your time, especially the elderly. I work a lot with the elderly uh, community and um, just take your time. Look at the email, you know, and worst case scenario, forward it, forward that email to everyone. Even Amazon would have a customer support email address where you could forward that to them and say, is this legitimate? And just take your time. There's no rush. There's no rush to click on anything. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be okay. Scammers are getting smarter. They are. Hackers are some, some of the smartest people in the world. And they're getting really sophisticated. Yeah. They have good computers. They have good computer skills. Yep. And we're just normal consumers. There's a real mismatch here. Oh, it's not fair. That's definitely not fair at all. And that's why, you know, I was looking at that stat earlier of over $1 billion dollars of scams in 2022 uh, from 60-year-olds and older. That, that's a staggering statistic if you think about that. All right. Now, can you remove your personal information from the internet? Somewhat. So there's a lot of aggregators of your information, where you live, your phone number, things like that, where one company feeds 30 other companies online with that information. You can contact like Intellectus, for example. There's a number of them you can contact and tell them you want your information removed and they'll remove it. So there are ways to do it. Um, if it's on the dark web, no. Can't get it off. Stuff. I mean, we have ways, you know, the average person, no. It would be very difficult to do um, because the problem is, you know, credit, credit reports are the biggest thing. Credit reports and credit card numbers are on the dark web more than anything else to buy those, those two things. Um, you're not getting that removed as the average consumer. And now the hacker has everything about you. So they can do a number of phishing, vishing, whatever it may be, pretexting, whatever it is. Um, they have all that information about you. So when they call you and they say they're from the IRS and they tell you your social security number, you're most likely going to say, okay, well, this is a legitimate call. They have my social security number and they know the last three places I've lived. Little do they know that the hacker got that information off of the dark web. Isn't it safe to say that any legitimate company, whether it's Amazon, eBay, agency like IRS, uh, the state government, mm -hmm the sheriff's office, the whoever, no legitimate entity is going to call you requiring urgent information for you to release or pay cash in any way at any time that you don't have time to call the mothership and find out if it's right. No matter what they're threatening, yep. we're coming to your house to, to arrest, arrest you, you yeah. if you don't pay X within the next 30 minutes to an hour, yeah. 
that's a risk you've got to be willing to take, that's right? Because that's just simply not going to happen. That's right. The IRS is a great example. They're going to send you a letter for sure. And in most instances, depending on what it is, it might be a certified letter, uh, right. one you have to sign for. They're not just going to cold call you and say, you owe us $5,000 and you have a half hour to pay it, or are you going to go to jail? You know, but and once again, that's the that's the issue when they focus on the elderly. They don't know of those scams. A lot of them don't know that these scams exist, and they've never even you know received a phone call from the IRS before. So the fear that's the thing with hackers. They want to instill fear and emotion. It's that emotion that they want to pull out of you because when you're fearful, you're not always thinking straight. Yeah, but what we've got to say to people is. These people can be sophisticated, but it takes your cooperation yeah. in most circumstances you for them to, to get something. to you. Yeah, you're going to have to do something. You've got to click on something. That's right. You've got to answer a question. That's you've got right. to do something. Yeah. And if it feels wrong, they need to hang up or hit delete. Yeah, or find someone who's in cybersecurity there's usually someone in the family or extended family who's in IT or even cybersecurity. And I always tell people, you always want to have one cybersecurity friend in your circle of trust, in your group. And that's who you want to go to. So if you're not sure, instead of reaching out to that company, reach out to someone who you know is in cybersecurity and have them take a quick look. There's something in America called due process. That's right. And nobody is going to come take your money, your property, or your freedom Without due process. That's right. So anybody that's calling you on the phone and saying, you pay us X or we're going to do Y is absolutely untrue. Yeah. You are entitled to due process and you don't have to take that bait. You don't have to do that. Yeah, that's right. I'm worried as we're coming into a dangerous period of time here. We're coming into the holiday season. We're coming into year end and a mm -hmm. lot of people are on calendar year. Yeah for taxes and things of that nature. So we're coming into a real fertile time for these people to create urgency yeah. and push people to do something. Yeah. It's good that you're doing shows like this. You're getting the word out so people know, especially this time of year, you're doing it in November. So millions yeah. of people are now going to know, look, you know, he makes a good point. I need to be more cautious online. 